What is going on everybody? Welcome to another viewer suggested video. If you're unfamiliar with this series or what I have been doing lately, I have been asking you guys, the viewers and the old school community, exactly what you want to see. Every week I make a post on my community tab asking you guys to provide me with some topics that you would like to see in the next video. By Tuesday or Wednesday of the following week, I will pick a topic, I'll comment on it, and let you know that your topic has been chosen and when you can expect the video. So if you would like to suggest a topic to one of these videos, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you have the bell icon turned on so you can see when I make that community post so you can get over there and comment your topic. For this week's topic, and I'm probably going to butcher this person's name, Sushi Kunvise, but we're just going to go with Sushi. Sushi is asking a boss tier you consider to get better at the game leading up to the hardest boss. Example, Zolra rank 10 because they will give you practice switching gear and prayer flicking, which is needed for rank 1 boss TOA. Now, that would be way too easy, just doing a top 10. I don't want to do just a top 10, and there's a whole lot more bosses than just 10, and I think even if we started at number 10 and worked our way up to the hardest thing in old school RuneScape, you'd still be left with a pretty hard boss to start with. So what I've done for this video is I've broken all of the more well-known combat-related bosses into four classes, beginner, intermediate, hard, and expert. Now, I have based this on not only difficulty, but mechanics, overall difficulty, prayer and gear switches, learning curve, memorization, and the ability to keep track of multiple things happening at once. Now, I've been playing old school RuneScape for nearly 20 years, so I think I have a pretty good grasp on this. You may not agree with this list, and you may put some things in other spots, but what we have to remember here is this video is based on someone who has minimal bossing experience and maybe only done something like Barrows or the King Black Dragon, and we're taking that and working into a more difficult bossing tier. So basically what I'm doing here is going from pretty much, you don't know anything about bossing, you can just stand there and poke something with your rapier, all the way up to, all right, I have to switch gear, I have to switch prayers, I have to understand what attacks are coming in what order, I have to memorize things along the way. That is how we're gonna do this. So. Without further ado, let's get started with our beginner class. In our beginner class, I have 11 bosses listed. Now, all of these bosses have little to no mechanics, don't require gear switches, and don't require prayer switches. First is going to be Barrows, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you out there probably guessed that. Barrows is a great beginner boss. You only have to have your overhead prayer active, no gear switches are involved, and if you do have to switch gear, it is running between the crypts of the brothers. So you don't have to stress for this. Barrows is just a heads up fight against each Barrows brother. You kill them all, get your loot potential, and then you loot the chest incredibly easy and throughout this video you'll see cards popping up to guides that i've created for these bosses as well as down in the description you can find a guide to something you might be unfamiliar with next up is going to be callisto callisto is listed as a beginner boss at the time the wilderness rework hasn't happened yet for these bosses so at the time callisto is very easy to do Callisto, you can lure, and the only damage you're going to take is on the lure if it actually does happen. Once you get Callisto lured, it is literally smooth sailing, no overhead prayers, no gear switching. You either just melee or range, whatever you're doing, until Callisto is dead. Very easy boss. Next up is the Chaos Elemental. The Chaos Elemental you can take damage from, and it is pretty consistent, but all you have to do is eat. You don't have to switch your overhead prayers, unless, of course, a PKer comes, then... Well, you're on your own at that point. But there is a method to flinching the Chaos Elemental where you would take no damage and you can just camp piety, and that is literally all there is to it. Next up is the Chaos Fanatic. The Chaos Fanatic has one mechanic that you do have to get out of the way of. The Chaos Fanatic can also take off, of, take off some of your items while you are in combat, and the Chaos Elemental can also do this, but easy way around that is just using Summer Pies as your food. After you eat it, you're left behind with a pie dish. It fills your inventory up, keeps it full, so none of your items can be taken off. The Chaos Fanatic can throw this attack at you that will land on three squares. You just run out of the way, and trust me, you have plenty of time to do this. Very easy boss to get started with understanding mechanics and stuff you have to get out of the way of. 
Next up is the Crazy Archaeologist. Same thing as the Chaos Fanatic. For this one, it is just Camp Overhead Range Prayer. Use Mage against the Crazy Archaeologist every now and then. He will throw some books at you that will hit the ground and explode, spread out into smaller explosions. Same thing. You have plenty of time to get out of the way. There is also an indicator that he will say, taste my knowledge or something like that. It'll be over his head. As soon as you see that, you can start moving. You're out of the way. You're safe. Next up is the Giant Mole. The Giant Mole is a very easy campable boss. It only uses melee attacks. A lot of people use Darox armor for this at 1 HP and just camp it. You can also use a Twisted Bow if you have that and you're just smooth sailing. Next up is the King Black Dragon. The King Black Dragon is incredibly easy to do, although it does use a different range of attacks. It uses different anti, or I'm sorry, it uses different fire breath attacks that could freeze you poison you and just regular fire breath that do damage. Now for this, you'll just stand in melee range with melee prayer on. You will always take damage from the fire breath, not even an extended super anti-fire can protect you from the alternate fire breath attacks, which I mentioned earlier, but it will protect you from the regular dragon fire. This one, pray melee, poke it with your pointy stick, and off you go. As for the Kraken, absolutely the easiest slayer boss. This one, you literally just stand there and mage it. Eat when you have to, and if you have the gear to do it, you can use a Sanguinesti staff, and you'll never actually need to bring food with you. This boss is actually a joke of a boss, incredibly easy to do. Next up is going to be Scorpia. Scorpia is another easy boss that you just can't one overhead prayer. You don't have to switch gear. The only thing you have to worry about is Ice Blitzing, its small minions that it puts out. The small minions will heal Scorpia if you let them go, but with an Ice Blitz on both of them, Scorpia gets lured back to you, and it's smooth sailing. Next up is the Thermonuclear Smoke Devil. There's a couple different ways to do this. Overhead prayers don't work here, so you don't have to worry about that. You also don't have to switch gear. The easiest way to do this is the player owned house method with a good special attack weapon, such as the Dragon Dagger or Dragon Claws. Run into the Smoke Devil's lair, use all your special attacks, and then just melee it until it's dead. Teleport to your player owned house, and then back. Repeat the process as many times as the task takes, and you're done. Next up is going to be Vedion. Vedion is another broken wilderness boss where you can perform a lure, attack it twice in its combat range, and then you'll run out of its combat range, attack it once, move back twice, once, twice, once, over and over and over again. You kill the hellhounds when they spawn, and then that's it. Next up, we're going to jump into our intermediate class of bosses. This is where we start to get into some gear switches and some prayer switches, but all of these bosses give you plenty of time to switch your gear and prayer before you have to worry about taking damage. I'm going to start this one off with the Abyssal Sire. The Abyssal Sire has three different phases to the fight. First is going to be the respiratory systems, which you'll generally do in range or mage gear, whichever one is easier for you or whatever you have available to you. Take out the respiratory systems and then you will start the second phase of the fight. The Abyssal Sire comes out from where it's sitting. You have plenty of time to switch over to your melee gear and turn on your prayers. After this phase is done, you'll then run down south a little bit where it will plant itself. The only thing you have to worry about here is an explosion, but it's easily indicated by a teleport, which you will just take three steps backwards, no damage there, get out of the way of the miasma pools, and off you go. Again, if you're looking for guides to any of these, I have linked them in the description below. Next up is going to be the Alchemical Hydra, and with the Alchemical Hydra, you would think something being level 95 Slayer to kill would be a lot harder, but trust me, it is not. The Alchemical Hydra is literally just a brain-dead money printer. The Alchemical Hydra uses magic and ranged attacks. Throughout the first three phases of the fight, it'll use three magic attacks and then three ranged attacks, or vice versa. Whichever one it uses, it's going to switch to the next one every time, and then back to the other one every single time over and over again. The only thing you really have to worry about is getting out of the way of the poison splats. Very easy to do. Electricity phase, also easy, just run away from it. And the flame skipping phase or the flame phase. The flame skip is incredibly easy to do as well. As for the black phase, you will have to switch your prayer after every attack. It will go back and forth between magic and range attacks depending on where it left off on the red phase. Next up is going to be the Dagonoth Kings. The Dagonoth Kings is in my intermediate class, again, because after you get through the initial rotation, it is very easy to do. You kill one Dagonoth King, switch your gear, and then go on to the next one. As for these Dagonoth Kings, they also have places in their lair that they will not roam and will not attack you. So it's very easy to safe spot 
each one of the Dagonoth Kings. Rex, you can save spot while taking no damage and using no prayer. Dagonoth Prime, you can stand down in the corner of the arena, I guess you could call it, or the dungeon, and you won't take any damage from either Rex or Supreme because they don't roam that far. And as for Supreme, incredibly weak to melee, Supreme will most likely always be dead before Dagonoth Rex respawns. Next is going to be the Grotesque Guardians, and this one might be a little bit more challenging for intermediate players because there are different mechanics in this as well as gear switches. However, if you switch your prayers before your gear at the Grotesque Guardians, you will always be fine. The Grotesque Guardians do have some falling rock mechanics, some orbs on the ground that you have to get out of the way of, and you do have to pick some things up throughout the fight. However, this is just muscle memory. Just like all things in old school RuneScape, the Grotesque Guardians fall into my intermediate category. Next is going to be Seracnus. I put Seracnus in the intermediate category because there is a mechanic where it will range you if it's far away, and then you'll have to switch your prayers based on how far away you are or whether you get back up to it in time. Seracnus is incredibly easy to kill. It's very weak to crush weapons. It does spawn magic and melee minions halfway through the fight, but they're very easily tanked with decent gear. Next up is going to be Vorkath. Vorkath does have its own powerful mechanics, but they are very simple to understand. There's a mechanic that will turn off your prayer. If you have your quick prayers set, you just click it as soon as they go off and they're back on. The fireball gives you plenty of time to get out of the way. The fireball is always going to take the same amount of time to get to you, no matter where you're standing in Vorkath's area. So whether you're standing all the way at the back or all the way at the front, it might look like it's coming faster or slower at you, but it's always coming at the same speed, giving you always the same amount of time. Additionally, it has mechanics that happen every seventh attack, which are the acid pools and the undead spawn. Very easy to understand. The acid pools, all you have to do is walk around them and stay off of them. The undead spawn, hit it once with crumble undead, and that's it. Next is going to be Zulra. And this one was kind of hard to place in Intermediate, but after thinking about it for a while, when you're learning Zalra, you can use the Magic Only method where you don't have to switch gear, only prayers. Now, the Magic Only method does take a good amount longer than if you were switching gears. However, it is a great way to learn Zalra in the beginning so you can memorize the rotations, know where you need to stand, and understand how much time you have to move spots. Once you are comfortable with that, then you can start to work in your ranged gear switch. The easiest way to do this is actually with Void. Although you will take a bit more damage, it is a minimal switching method, which you can get comfortable with gear switching. After that, you can then start to work better gear and more switches into your Zolra rotation. Moving into our hard category. This is where it gets a little bit more difficult. I'm gonna start this one out with Cerberus. Now Cerberus in and of itself isn't extremely difficult, but there are some things that can happen when paired together can be lethal. And this has to do with the ghosts as well as the lava pools, which can happen at the same time, depending on the time you take to kill Cerberus. Now when this happens at the same time, it can be a little bit troublesome to move and switch your prayers accordingly with the ghosts. The only other thing I have to say about Cerberus is Learning the timing between the prayer flicks for the ghost can be a little bit difficult, but I would say 25 to 30 kills in, you will get the hang of it and it'll be no problem. Next up is going to be the Chambers of Zarek. The Chambers of Zarek is going to be in the hard category because overall, it's really not that difficult. It's more or less just muscle memory and communication. Communicating with your team is very important in the Chambers of Zarek. As for the bosses that go in here, that is a whole different tier of difficulty. There are certain raid rotations that are preferred over others because they do give more points, they're faster, but that's another topic for another video. Once you get down gear switching in the intermediate class of bosses, it will be no problem for you in the Chambers of Zarek. The only thing you will have to do in the Chambers of Zarek is build muscle memory based on what boss you're fighting. Following that, I'm also gonna put the Chambers of Zarek hard mode or challenge mode in the hard category as well. This because it's really just the same thing. Are the bosses a little harder? Yes, they are, but they are the same mechanics and very easily adjusted to. The only thing that might be a little bit more difficult about the challenge mode chambers of Zarek is hitting the time requirements to get those point boosts. Other than that, you're looking at the same thing, just every single boss in the raid rather than just a rotation. Next up is gonna be the gauntlet. 
The gauntlet I put in hard because there's a lot going on once you get to the Crystalline Hunlif. This one you have to keep track of how many attacks that you have done against the Hunlif before it changes prayers, how many attacks the Hunlif does against you before it switches attack styles. You'll also have to monitor what's going on on the floor so you're not standing in the wrong spot, as well as avoid some tornadoes every now and then. It is a lot to add up, but the main reason I put this into the hard category is because you don't have to use anything to learn. You don't need any items to do the gauntlet. You can just go right in there. Even if you have zero GP in your bank, it is pretty much just free money once you get it down. Next up is gonna be the God Wars dungeon bosses. I'm grouping all of these in together because they're very soloable nowadays. With the gear we have available to us, teams are really no longer necessary in the God Wars dungeon, unless of course you're lower level, but our higher level accounts out there will have no problem learning to solo these bosses. Next up is gonna be the Calphite Queen. Calphite Queen in the hard category, why? It's so simple. Well, the Calphite Queen can spit out damage. The Calphite Queen has a special ability where it ignores all armor and prayer, all armor and defense bonuses. The Calphite Queen, regardless of what you're praying, the opposite attack, whether it be mage or range, it will hit you for some high damage. Calphite Queen has a pretty high attack speed, so that damage can stack up if you're not paying attention. Other than that, the Calphite Queen is smooth sailing, its only problem is its extreme damage output. Next up is going to be Nex. Nex really isn't too tough, but the learning curve can be a little heavy. As for Nex, the fight consists of five different phases based on the ancient magics, which are Shadow, Blood, Ice, and Smoke. So each one of those phases you'll have to complete, and there is an empowered final state. You'll also have to kill Nex's bodyguards throughout the fight based on the hit points threshold. You'll have to go through the Smoke, then the Shadow, Blood, and Ice based on however many hit points are missing. As for the fight itself, it's really not that hard, but keeping track of where you are and dodging different attacks can make it a little bit difficult. Following up with next is going to be the Nightmare. The Nightmare, whether it be regular or Fasani's Nightmare, it's pretty tough. There's a lot going on, prayer switches, areas you have to avoid, the sleeping things that you have to kill. I personally hate uh, Nightmare. I haven't been there that much, honestly. It's something that I really just do not enjoy and I don't enjoy the collection log hunt that's coming. As for the Nightmare, definitely want to get some practice in this. If you can find a team that can take you and help you get a little bit good at it before you start trying to solo, it would definitely be beneficial. Next up is going to be the Theater of Blood, and this is going to be Entry and Normal Mode. As for the Entry Mode, it's very easy to do, very soloable with a little bit of knowledge and game mechanics. As for the Normal Mode, it does get a little tough, but there is very minimal gear switching, if any, when you have to. Except for the final phase of the fight, you will have to do some gear switching there. But again, you'll have plenty of time in between when you need to gear switch. The only thing that the Theater of Blood really makes it hard content is keeping track of everything that's going on, especially in phase three of the final fight. You have the webs on the floor, you have the green bouncing ball, and the magic attacks, the ranged attacks, and it can be a little bit tough if whoever is tanking doesn't know how to properly tank, you can take massive melee damage. But with a little bit of practice, Theater of Blood is no problem. Again, this is all just muscle memory. Next up is gonna be the Tombs of a Masket entry mode. The Tombs of a Masket entry mode makes it into hard for me, which some people would say it should be an intermediate. However, if you're going into the Tombs of a Masket with no raiding experience and minimal gear and prayer switching experience, it's going to be very tough for you. So I would definitely suggest having some experience with gear and prayer switches, especially for the room with Akka. Akka always protects from two different styles, and you'll have to use the style that doesn't that is not protected, and you'll also have to pay attention to what kind of attacks Akka is using, not to mention the final phase with the little white blobs. As for everything else in the Tombs of a Masket, it's actually pretty simple, but you'll still need to understand damage outputs, what to do, what not to do, and to memorize where you have to go, what things do what. My last one for hard is actually going to be Venonatus. Not so much because of the fight, but because of the lure setup. Venonatus at the current time, prior to the Wilderness Boss update, which apparently is coming at some time. Setting up the lure, you have to be tick perfect. You have to be using a certain weapon. The only weapons I believe that you can do this with right now are the Magic Short Bow, as well as the Crossbow. Now being tick perfect is not easy, especially with 
RuneScape's notorious servers that do lag from time to time. Being tech perfect, once you get that down, you'll do it every single time, but I will warn you, it will take some time to get used to it. And finally, we make it to our expert class of bosses. Now, I've only put three in here because these are the only three that I actually believe are very difficult and do take a good amount of experience to get good at. The first one is going to be the Corrupted Gauntlet. The Corrupted Gauntlet is definitely harder than the Gauntlet because you have less time to prepare, which could put you in a bad position based on your armor and weapons. The Crystalline Hunleaf does get a little bit harder and the mechanics are the same. However, the damage output is a lot more, especially if you're stuck with tier one armor. So getting good at the Gauntlet first is definitely gonna help you going into the Corrupted Gauntlet, especially with your prep time. Next is gonna be the Theater of Blood Hard Mode. Now the Theater of Blood Hard Mode is somewhat more difficult than the Entry Mode. You're looking at other mechanics as well as higher damage, higher boss defense, all of that stuff. The Theater of Blood Hard Mode, I would not suggest doing until you have a very firm grasp on the normal Theater of Blood. Last but not least is going to be the Tombs of a Masket, and this is gonna be Normal and Expert Modes. Now, normal modes, I would say you could possibly do in the hard category with the invocations from 150 to 250 or 275. Once you start to get past that, it does get a little hectic. As for the expert mode, that is just an entirely different level of PVM. You will have to be good to do an expert mode, especially with zero deaths. As for everything else, the bosses get harder, they get stronger, the mechanics are a little different, especially depending on which invocations you pick. Insanity at the very end can absolutely devastate a team that doesn't know what they're doing or just devastate you if you are solo. So the Tombs of a Masket at the current time, especially Exmo Expert Mode, is actually going to be my top tier pick for the hardest thing to do in old school RuneScape, aside from the Inferno. So that is gonna wrap this one up, everybody. I hope that this has helped you if you're looking for a good boss tier list. Now, like I said, this video is based on mechanics, overall difficulty, prayer and gear switches, learning curve memorization, and the ability to keep track of multiple things happening at once. Again, you may not agree with this list or you might take it and run with it. For me, if I had to start old school RuneScape all over again, and I knew what I know, this is exactly how I'd start, especially with lower level accounts moving into endgame content. Once again, any guides that I have for these bosses are listed down in the description. So if you are checking this list out and it looks like something that could help you, make sure to check the description, check out my guides, and I'm sure you'll have no problem moving through this tier list. As always, everybody, thank you for watching this video. Remember, if you want to suggest a topic, subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell icon so you can be one of the first to comment and maybe get your topic chosen. Thank you again for watching. I will see you on the next one. Take it easy.